Well, good evening. You know, it's so gratifying, I think, to work in these fields that we're talking about today, global health and global development. And so often when I meet people, they express their, their desire to work in this area. And they'll often say, you know, I want the help. And what can I do? That's the next thing that comes out is how can I help? And I think when you start to tackle this problem and think about it a little bit, we also face this at the foundation. And I understand where they're coming from because I so often feel that way myself. When you think about world poverty or the global burden of disease, it's very, very hard to get your arms around these huge problems. Bill and I started the foundation because we believe that all lives have equal value. That means everybody getting to lead a healthy and a productive life. That means all lives everywhere on the planet. That's seven billion people. So the foundation, we're fortunate. We do have a significant endowment, and I think more importantly, we have a whole host of experts who advise us both inside the foundation and out. And we also have a huge number of partners that work on the ground. But we still don't have a very easy way of thinking about seven billion people. And I think to me, it's as mind-boggling as it is to me, as it is to everybody else. So I've spent a lot of time in the last decade to 12 years when we've been working in global health thinking a bit about this problem. How do we achieve a mission like this when it's so vast? And it's the same question, really, that passionate individuals are thinking about when they're working on the ground. It's the same question they're asking Bill and me. So how does anyone think about solving problems that are so vast and affect so many people. And I'd like to take a few minutes this afternoon to talk about how we do tackle this issue, and particularly how we're working here in India. So why? Why does our foundation work in India? Well, as you know, this country is a hotbed for innovation. It also has markets that are growing at warp speed, and has some of the most vibrant cities on the planet. But India also has a huge burden of disease. For example, half of all the malnourished children in the world are born right here in India. And we know that these children, without some sort of early intervention, are going to have lifelong health conditions that will follow them throughout their lives. So if we want to have an effect on poverty and disease globally, we have to work in India. But the problem is that doesn't narrow it down very much. In such a large country with 28 states and seven different territories and a population of 1.2 billion people, it doesn't make you feel like if the whole world is too big that India is a whole lot smaller. So we have to turn to the government of India for guidance and advice, which we've done all along through the way, because there's so much learning that's already happened here. And the goal for us really was to gain insights from what the government of India already knew and already was working on, and how they see having impact on these problems. And we've learned some very interesting things in the last 10 years, and two things have really stood out. As you know, India has a very large and effective National Rural Health Mission Program, NRHM. It's great at taking proven ideas and scaling them up across the country. The second thing that we learned, though, was that the innovation is really happening at the state level. So if you want to test new ideas and solve new problems, you really have to work at the state level. Now, the foundation strives to be catalytic. And in India, we believe that means in working in partnership with innovators at the state level. Because our belief is that if we can help spur that innovation and find those innovators, we can help take their ideas and make sure they get spread on a very large scale. So then the question becomes, in which states should we work? And we decided to work in India closely with several states, but in particular with the state of Bihar. So why Bihar? Well, first, the burden of disease in Bihar is massive. But equally important, the government in this state has a huge capacity for innovation. 
Well, why is Bihar so innovative? It really comes down to leadership, which is true in so many places in the world. And in this state, it really is the leadership of Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. And one of my colleagues asked him about his priorities, and he said he had three priorities. Governance, governance, and governance. And we don't think you can have a better partner than that. So if you take the world from 7 billion people down to 1.2 billion, but then you look at a state like Bihar that has 98 million people. If Bihar was a country, it would be the 12th largest in the world. So how do you help 98 million people? Well, let me give you an example of how it's working in Bihar. When Chief Minister Kumar took office in 2005, he sought solutions to a large range of problems in his state. One of the key things that he realized was that Bihar had a very low immunization rate. And that meant that many children who could otherwise be vaccinated weren't. And we weren't saving their lives. In 2005, just to give you an example, the global immunization rate was about 70%. But in Bihar, it was 33%. So the government went in in Bihar and diagnosed the problem. And they identified a couple of important contributing factors. But the most important they found was that these women, these auxiliary nurse midwives, were being asked to do too many things. Instead of just giving basic health interventions, they were delivering vaccines, but they were also having to make sure that they were working on vaccine logistics at the same time. So on a vaccination day, this auxiliary midwife nurse had to go to the clinic and actually get the vaccines from one place, take them from the primary health care center out to the clinic where she'd immunize the children, and then go back to the primary health care center at the end of the day to file her report on who she'd actually vaccinated. Now, Bihar is not an easy place to travel. You have to deal with problems like this. You have to cross rivers and you have to travel long distances. So what was happening with these nurses is that they were traveling most of the day, and they were spending very little time actually vaccinating children. In fact, when you looked at their time horizon over a day, they were only spending one hour vaccinating children out of their entire day. So in parts of Bihar, the government decided to experiment. And what they did was they decided to separate vaccine logistics from actually delivering a vaccination in a child's arm. So the nurse midwife no longer had to do two jobs. And instead, the state hired these men, essentially couriers on bicycles, to now deliver the vaccines to the nurse midwives. And the result was a significant increase in the amount of time that the nurses could spend actually immunizing children. So this has had a huge impact in Bihar. Vaccine coverage in Bihar is up 65%, and it's still climbing. But here's the best part. Good ideas spread. So after Bihar did this experiment in a couple of places in their state, they expanded the idea across the state in 2007. And then they took to the National Rural Health Mission last year. And the NRHM is in the process of scaling this up countrywide. So this courier idea, though, is relevant elsewhere. We see the same vaccination problems all over the world. And so this idea that was started in a northern state in India can now spread to places like Guatemala and Zambia and all over the world. So here's the lesson that I take away from this story. If you want to have impact at the macro level, you have to begin working at the micro level. You start with the problems of one person. And when you find this ingenious solution, you identify it, you learn from it, you disseminate it, and you scale it up. At the foundation, we're looking for partners who have both ingenious ideas and partners who are interested in spreading those innovative ideas. So when people ask me as individuals how they can have impact, how they can make a difference, I tell them that it takes just one idea. It just takes one solution to a problem that they see around them.
Because when that idea gets replicated and spread across the world, it's what changes the planet. It becomes part of a global movement. So in this case, it's one man going around delivering vaccines on a bicycle to one nurse midwife who's immunizing one precious child. And that saves lives. Thank you.